Hi, I thought I'd make a video on assembling a Lucas 25D distributor um, as there isn't very many videos out on YouTube showing how one of these is assembled and how they work. This one is out of a Morris Minor. So yeah, I've since put an electronic ignition in my Morris Minor but I'd like to assemble a spare distributor with points just in case if that fails. So I'll show you the process of assembling it from completely dismantled to fully assembled. So here I have the housing, I guess, of the distributor and down there is where the centrifugal weights sit for the um, mechanical advance. So we'll get that in first. As you can see, this is the lobe which will open and close the points and this does go in, in a particular direction. So make sure you don't get this backwards otherwise your timing will be 180 degrees out of phase. What you want to do is you just want to grab a bit of oil, any light oil will do, and just lightly oil um, these places. And then put these weights, weights in. And they should sit in there like that. Like that. If you can clearly see that. Um, next, I'll just add a bit, of, bit more oil on top of them. And down the holes as well. Not too much. And now these two poles, or these two pins I should say, um, will go into there. But they will go in both ways. So the way you find out which way they go in is when this piece here, this cutout for where this piece slots into, this must be facing the 6 o'clock uh, position. And then if you look on the bottom of this, um, I'll get another distributor to show you. You can see how it's slightly offset. You see this one's slightly offset that way, as you can see. So, when the this opening here is at the 6 o'clock position, this should be on the right, viewed from the top. So that pin driving dog should be on the right hand side, with this at the, at the 6 o'clock position, before we hook the springs back in. So let's do that now. Cool, so that's at the 6 o'clock, oh sorry, that's on the right hand side now. Uh, the driving dog, and now this should slot in. Driving dog is on this side. Now, we need to hook these springs back onto those pins there. They should go on very easily. There we go, now that's in. Next what we want to do is just, because this rotates freely independently, this lobe is actually free to rotate independently from the shaft that this is driven off of. So what we want to do is we want to drop a few drops of oil down there, not too much. Just work it back and forth a little bit. Next, once this is all oiled up, um, we want to get the screw it goes into, into the middle here that holds it down um, so just drop it in and screw it in you'll have to hold this part at the back so it doesn't rotate this shouldn't need to be very tight cool and that's good now how this works is the distributor spins this way and as the engine speed increases these weights will fly out and when these weights fly out I don't know if you can see that but if you, can you see the, the larger plate this plate up here when these weights fly out these rotate and that rotates this cam so and therefore advances the ignition timing this is solely engine speed based so as the engine speed increases the more it advances there's also a vacuum advanced diaphragm up here that rotates the plate which the points are mounted on but that is based off of load for example if you're going up a hill and the speed of the engine drops but the ignition still needs to be advanced that's when the vacuum advanced control will take over next let's get this plate in this is the plate which the points sit on it might pay to take this off and give it a good clean with some brake clean or some turpentine or petrol or whatever. It'll be good to lube up these surfaces because this rotates 
how this comes together is you, uh, comes apart. Sorry, is you rotate it there. And see how that hole's larger? Then it will slide apart. I'm not going to take it off, but because I've already got the grease in, and don't want to make a mess. But make sure that it's nicely lightly greased, and this plate rotates nice and smoothly and freely. So let's get this in next. So this is how the distributor would be orientated in the car. This would be up. And that would be the back of the car. That would be front of the car. At least on a Morris Minor. What we want to do is just drop that in. Make sure, you know, all your connections are nice and clean, which it is. And then we'll just put the screws in. Make sure not to over tighten it. And if you need to, if you smear some grease anywhere and you think it's good to wipe it off, you don't want any grease where near the points. Otherwise they're not, they're not going to work properly. And another thing is this wire. This earths the plate to the car. Make sure that wire is not pinched on anything and can have its full range of motion. Next, let's get the vacuum advance in. To test it and make sure it's working properly, what you want to do is you can either hook up a vacuum pump or something on the here or just use your mouth and suck but when you suck on it it should move this up like that and therefore it will rotate this plate I'm not going to do that now because that's I know this is working it's a bit awkward trying to film that yeah, when you apply a vacuum here the spring should just move up a little bit you'll see the movement and it shouldn't be very difficult to move a light vacuum will, will move it so let's get this in next all you do you put it through here and that spring will hook onto there but we'll do that later next you want to get this little ratcheting clip thing that just drops into there yeah, there we go that'll do and then you grab the little wheel that goes on it that might be a slightly better view um, just note that the ones on DM2 distributors are slightly fatter for some reason. There are some slight differences between them. Make sure to put the spring in. Don't forget that part. And you see this one side is it's got a notch in it, other side doesn't. You want the flat, smooth side against the spring. There we go, I had to get it started off camera. It might be a bit tricky to get it started. You might have to hold this with your palm and then push against that, against the spring until the threads start to catch but you can see it's clicking so what we want to do is you just want to screw it in until the head protrudes out so we can get that clip on as you can see the head of that now protrudes past there and now you want to get yourself this tiny little clip that went on it and we'll just put it over and squeeze it there we go had to do it off camera but you can see that clip is on now all I did was use some pliers lightly crimp it so it doesn't come off and all that does is that prevents you from accidentally advancing the ignition too much so the um, nut will comes off and now make sure we connect the spring back onto this plate here just, just lift it over and put it on yep, so we'll just do that now rotate the plate a bit until it lines up cool and push it down cool and let's just wipe off any grease that we might have smeared everywhere. Right, now let's get the points in and I'll show you how to set them. That hole there, where the red plastic piece is, just goes over that. And then we can first put this rubber piece and this little screw holds the condenser in place. These points are fairly new. Um, they were what was in the car before I took the uh, took them out and put electronic ignition in them but just as a note these condensers the new ones do tend to go bad I had one go bad off at me um, just after 100 miles so if you can try get a new old stock one this is an old old one off a different car I think someone gave me so not the one that came with these sets of new points and now we want to put the screw back into that hole and uh, make sure you have like a washer on that as well don't fully tighten this yet leave it a bit loose because we still need to adjust the actual points the gap so 
so now we need a feeler gauge and I'll go grab that now. Right, sorry, my main camera died, so I switched to my phone. This angle might actually be better, but to set the points, you need a feeler gauge and a screwdriver. So first you want to rotate the shaft. That lobe is on its peak, therefore the points will be at its um, biggest opening. And now get your feeler gauge, make sure it's clean of any oil and dirt or anything like that. It should be set at 0.35 millimeters or thereabouts. I'll put the imperial conversions on the screen and the official information from the manual. What you want to do is you want to slacken that screw up so therefore you can open and close at the points. You just want to slip this in. And it should just be barely rubbing. So you want to tighten that screw up now. Just be careful when setting them, don't accidentally push this, which will affect the point gap. So make sure, as you can see, when I put this in, it is just barely catching. And it isn't lift, hasn't lifted that red piece off the lobe. So cool, that's all set. So just make sure it's tight, which it is. And cool, and uh, let's just wipe off any grease that we might have smeared everywhere. And now for your cap, this is a second hand cap, but what you want to make sure is no corrosion inside here. Um, just a bit dirty on the outside, I can't be bothered cleaning that, but no corrosion inside here. I've already used a little Dremel tool and used a little wire attachment, cleaned all those out. And in here, make sure it's not dirty, uh, that's, that'll be fine. Uh, but make sure that little graphite tip is spring loaded, not seized. And these points where the spark jumps to, make sure they're not corroded or dirty or whatever. Um, you can see on this one, I haven't cleaned this one up yet, but this one's not that great. You can see a lot of white powdery stuff in there, so that's not good because this is aluminium. So that's not good. Make sure you clean it up, and in here it's even worse. See, it's all rusty and disgusting. As you can see, so this one will need some cleaning up, otherwise it would work. Um, this graphite, it isn't seized, but it is a bit sticky. Um, that's why I've chosen to use this one, or you clean this one up. Anyway, so let's just double check everything. Make sure the vacuum advanced is connected. As you can see when I rotate the, the lobe, because it rotates that way, it's shown by the anti-clockwise as you from the top. You can see the point opening and closing. Before we put the cap on, make sure to put this back on. And this has a little slot in the bottom, which just slides in. Cool, make sure there's no grease or anything on the top. Fingers are dirty like me. Cool. And it wouldn't hurt just to grab a little bit of grease. Actually, a little bit. And just smear it on the lobe. Not too much, because you, you don't want to get it on the points. And then just work it out. So then, that plastic piece rides on a film of grease, and that will just reduce the wear. Because as that wears down, they'll actually slightly change your timing, or ever so slightly in the gap. Not by much, but especially when the points are new, they're kind of cheap. That plastic is kind of uneven. But now you can see it's riding on the lobe entirely. And let's get the cap on. There is a way that these go on. Cutout goes there, so you can't put it on in a funky direction, and these clips just snap on. And lastly, this goes to the engine, it will get oiled, but it might be wise just to add a bit of oil here. Just spin that around a bit. That's all done. That's one spare distributor for the Morris Miner completed.